We will now take a look at estimation of factor models and particularly the confirmatory factor analysis model. This is uh, important to understand because sometimes your factor analysis results indicate that the model doesn't fit the data. And uh, that is indicated by the chi-square statistic. Then you have to understand what to do. And to understand what to do, you have to understand what the factor analysis actually does and what kind of relationships it models in the data. So let's take a look at how confrontary factor analysis models are estimated. The idea in confrontary factor analysis model estimation is that you apply tracing rules. So this is the same thing that you apply in mediation models or in a regression model if you estimate it from a correlation matrix. We uh, have a factor model here and we can specify that the correlations between A1 and A2, A1 and B1 and uh, A1 with itself, which is the variance, are functions of these model parameters. We use the phi letter, Greek letter phi, for a factor correlation, that's a convention, and then we use lambdas for factor loading, that's also a, a convention. And these all lambdas are different lambdas, so they take different values. So the correlation between A1 and A2 is uh, whatever uh, different paths we can go from A1 to A2, so we can go uh, up here and then we go down. And that's one path and there are no other paths from A1 to A2. So we, we multiply everything along the way, the way. So we have one factor loading and then we have another factor loading. And uh, that's the uh, A, lambda A1, lambda A2. That's the correlation A1, A2, assuming that these are standardized estimates. Then uh, A1, B1 is calculated similarly. The path is uh, we take from A1 to A, then we take the correlation and then we take uh, B to B1. So that's the uh, correlation between A1 and B1. Then the variation of A1, we have two different ways for, to go somewhere and come back. So we can go to A and come back and we can go to the error term E and come back. So uh, that's the uh, the variance of, of A. And uh, how we estimate this model again is that then we, we calculate a model implied correlation between all indicators and we try to adjust the model so that the uh, correlations match the observed data. Here we have a positive decrease of freedom. So uh, we are estimating uh, altogether 13 different things from the data. So we have six factor loadings we have six error terms and then we have one correlation. So uh, six plus six plus one is 13 and uh, we have 21 units of information because we have 21 unique elements in correlation matrix of six indicators. So we have six variances and uh, then we have 15 uh, unique correlations. So these, these don't count because they're not unique. The decrease of freedom is eight, which means that we have a positive decrease of freedom and the model is then overestimated, over identified. That means that we cannot typically solve it uh, exactly. So we cannot find uh, a set of model implied correlations for these, uh, these correlations so that every correlation would match the observed correlation. So we, we cannot solve it. We have to just uh, find uh, a way to quantify the difference between the implied correlation and the observed correlation. We could take a uh, sum of squares, which would be uh, the unweighted least squares estimator. Typically, uh, we take a weighted sum of these uh, implied correlations minus the observed correlations and a particular set of weights produces uh, the maximum likelihood estimation, maximum likelihood estimator for this particular model. Uh, so the idea is that we uh, find the model parameters so that the implied correlations are as close to the observed correlations as possible. To do that, there are some other things that we need to consider before we can actually uh, estimate the model. But that uh, relates to identification and scale setting that I'll describe in the next video.